and I keep talking about capacity is because, you know, until we have the ability to manage ourselves, to manage our economy, to manage our lives, to empower our, ourselves, where the citizens are not even dependent upon the government, but can do things for themselves, whether it's farming or trading, um, until we can do that, uh, the, the natural resources will not mean very much. And even if we attract foreign capital and investment, um, we have to have the people that can be employed and that can work for the entities. If, they have to, if we have to import all of our skills, then it's going to be very difficult for us to have the sustainable growth. I think for us as UNP, key for Liberia to get to that point will be what kinds of capacities that the country will be able to produce, to be able to drive this development, get it that transformation it takes. And that's why for us it's so important that while we're thinking about what are the short-term capacity gaps, we're also thinking about what would be the medium-term capacity needs and profiles. To see how together we can work with government to make sure that the institutions in place are solid enough on the vocational and technical side, on the tertiary side, to be able to produce the kind of workforce that really would take Liberia from the development phase to the transformation phase. Well, the, one of, one of the, the good things that, that has happened since, since we took over the leadership uh, of the ministry is to engage UNDP more. And, and, and this engagement revolved around essentially capacity but in a, in a multi-dimensional area. For example, in the area of economic affairs. We've also worked with UNDP and actively engaged with UNDP to institutionalize capacity building in Liberia because we know from, from the first year of uh, PRS uh, review, preliminary review, capacity is a binding constraint. Um, there's 11 formal ex-combatants working for us as part of this program. So um, UNDP had paid half their salary and we paid half, but now we took them onto our payroll um, the 1st of May when the program was over. Um, we're delighted with them. It's, 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 we treat them the same as any other employee. These guys are, are good. I hope you get a chance to meet them. Um, they, they really work hard. They try hard and you know, we're, we're delighted to have them. My unit is uh, deeply involved in such activities in terms of supporting the various sector ministries to have policy and strategy on board to help them also to build human and institutional capacity uh, through a strategic planning as well as project development. We have a number of initiatives in the areas of uh, national capacity development through the SES, which means Senior Executive uh, Services, TOC10, and also the uh, National Capacity Development Strategy for the next 10 years. Um, we have a lot of initiatives associated with that. We suffered from a brain drain and the best and brightest Liberians left the country. We are now trying to reverse the brain drain and turn the brain drain into a brain gain to bring qualified Liberians back into the country to help drive the reform and development agenda of the government. So in order to achieve the successes in the 10-year capacity building strategy, we have to put into place some short to medium term programs that can act as catalysts to drive the 10-year development strategy. This is why we have put into place these programs like the TOC 10, the SES, the LECBS, and some other capacity building programs. The TOC 10 is designed for quick, measurable, short-term interventions, whereas the SES is a three-year program. Of the 100 positions we are trying to recruit for the Senior Executive Service Program, to date we have recruited about 96. Well, I think the UNDP has done extremely well. UNDP has given us the opportunity as a nation and as a people to plan for ourselves with UNDP support. Critical, we as a nation have to take the ownership that's the first good step, and they have done that. They have created that environment. We, are, we, we appreciate that for a first part. Now, what they're doing in terms of aiding our capacity building, we just went upstairs, 
We saw the nice center that was set up in the Ministry of Internal Affairs that is going to help to transform the skills of the people in this ministry that they may also be able to be practiced at the county level extremely. In terms of the infrastructure, the UNDP has done a lot in terms of crafting some of the policies that are going to guide the future of this country. So we're quite grateful for that. Liberia is poised, looking like it's back on track. But there's one fundamental thing that needs to happen. Liberians would have to recognize that and seize that opportunity. Because what Onmil has done is to provide a blanket for peace. And how Liberia uses that space to reconcile and to become as one in terms of the vision of the people and take charge, not just the government. The government is committed, its leadership is committed, it works very hard, round the clock, 24 hours, but what we really want to see are Liberians taking charge.